though Christmas isn't for another two months, but you may be aware that three years ago this day, we got a film that kind of was a mixture of that particular holiday and Halloween as well. So prepare yourselves as I review Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas. Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. So greetings, my fellow YouTubers, and welcome to Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. My name is Dual, better known to you as the Big D, and this time around, I bring to you a review of the 1993 stop-motion anime and musical dark fantasy flick, The Nightmare Before Christmas, originally re released by Touchstone Pictures, Drew Buena Vista Pictures Distribution. The film was directed by Henry Selick in his featured directorial debut and produced in conceit by Tim Burton, telling the story of Jack Skellington, the king of Halloween Town, who stumbles upon Christmas Town and schemes to take over the holiday. Danny Elfman wrote the songs and score and provided the singing voice of Jack. It also includes a big Cast that includes Krista Randing, Catherine O'Hara, William Hickey, Kim Page, Paul Pee Wee Herman Rubens, whom we sadly lost this year, Glenn Shaggs, and Ed Ivory. The film was actually released on this day, October 29, 1993, after it was released a couple weeks before in limited release, but I'm doing this on its actual full release. Now, of course, Disney, of course, has reissued the film numerous times, including more recently. But for now, let's get into the story. Halloween Town is a fantasy world populated by various monsters and beings associated with the holiday. As we get into the song, This is Halloween. Jack Skeleton, who is respected by the citizens as the Pumpkin King, leads them in organizing the annual Halloween celebration. But he has grown tired of the same annual routine and wants something new. Which leads into the son Jack's Lament. While wandering in the woods the next morning, he encounters several trees containing doors leading to the other holiday-themed worlds. Christmas, Easter, Thanksgiving, Independence Day, Valentine's Day, and St. Patrick's Day. And stumbles into a door leading to Christmas Town. Which goes into the next song, What's This? Awed by the unfamiliar holiday, Jack returns home to show his friends and neighbors his findings. But unaware of the idea of Christmas, they compare everything to their ideas of Halloween, which goes into the town meeting song. However, they do relate to one Christmas town character, its ruler, Santa Claus, or Sandy Claus, as Jake mistakenly calls him. Jack sequesters himself in his house's study Christmas further and find a way to rationally explain it in the song Jack's Obsession. After his studying and experimentation accomplished nothing, Jack ultimately decides that Christmas should be improved rather than understood and announces that Halloween Town will take over Christmas this year. Jack assigns the residents many Christmas themed jobs including singing carols, making presents, going to the sun making Christmas, and building a sleigh pulled by skeletal reindeer. Sally, a feminine creation of local mad doctor, Dr. Finkelstein, experiences a vision of burning, uh, well, of a burning Christmas tree and warns that their efforts will end disastrously. Jack, whom she secretly loves, dismisses her for warnings and assigns her with making him a Santa Claus suit. He also tasks mischievous trick-or-treating trio Lock, Shock, and Barrel with abducting Santa and bringing him to Halloween Town in the, during the song Kidnap the Sandy Claws. Jack tells Santa that he will be handling Christmas in his place this year and orders the trio to keep Santa safe. However, against his wishes, they deliver Santa to Jack's longtime rival Oogie Boogie, a boogeyman with a passion for gambling who plots to play a game with Santa's life at stake going to Oogie Boogie song. After failing to stop Jack from carrying out his plan in Sally's song, Sally attempts to rescue Santa, but is captured. Now for the ending. You know the procedure. You have five seconds to stop this video. Go to the description box below. Fast forward to the time below. As I'm counting down, if you've seen the movie already, please continue. 
Okay, you've been warned. Jack departs to deliver the presents in the real world, but they frighten the populace, who contact the authorities and are instructed to lock down their homes and residences for protection. When word spreads about Jack's actions, he is shot down by military forces and crashes in a cemetery. While the residents of Halloween Town believe him to be dead, Jack survives as he bemoans a disaster he has caused in the sound poor Jack. He finds that he enjoyed using his new methods of scaring people, reigniting his love of Halloween, but realizes he must act to fix his mess. Jack returns home and infiltrates Oogie's lair, rescuing Santa and Sally before confronting Oogie. He defeats him by unraveling a thread holding his plot form together, causing the bugs inside him to spill out and reduce him to nothing. Jack apologizes for his actions to Santa, who, despite being furious with Jack for the chaos he caused and not listening to Sally, assures him he can still save Christmas. As Santa replaces Jack's presents with genuine ones, all of Halloween Town celebrates Jack's survival and return in finale slash reprise. Santa then shows Jack that there are no hard feelings between them by bringing snowfall to the town, fulfilling Jack's original dream of bringing the Christmas spirit to his domain, and the residents realize the true meaning of Christmas. Afterwards, Jack and Sally declare their love for each other and share a kiss. End of story. So what did I think of The Nightmare Before Christmas? Well, well, I have never actually taken the time to watch this movie much. I do seem to recall seeing maybe one time, that's been a few years back in YU. I've only seen bits and pieces of this when this was first released. But I do seem to recall seeing about all the film on TV, though. But that's been some, some years ago. So, I recently watched it on Disney+, Plus, and I will say it is pretty fun and what have you. Now, in... The film did... All right, and what have you? And so far, it has now gone to make ninety-five million worldwide. In its initial theatrical run, it got earned fifty million in the U.S. and was regarded as a moderate sleeper hit. And then it's garnered more money since its reissue in two thousand six. Now, the film currently sits certified fresh on Rotten Tomatoes, with 95% saying that the film is a stunningly original and visually delightful work of stop-motion animation. I do agree with that. Roger Ebert was, gave a highly positive review of this, and believed the film's visual effects were as revolutionary as Star Wars, taking into account that the film was filled with imagination that carries us into a new world. Pierre Travers of Rolling Stone call it a restoration of originality and daring to the Halloween genre. This dazzling mix of fun and fright also explodes the notion that animation is kid stuff. It's 74 minutes of timeless movie magic. Yeah. I will say I do agree and what have you uh, on a lot of these views. A lot of these views are pretty decent and what have you. But anyway, and they've been talking about sequel, but it hasn't been mentioned so much. However, just not so long ago this month, Henry Selleck stated that he was inclined to do a prequel film about how Jack became the king of Halloween Town. Oh well. But, however, they have released a, um, a well, a video game that started as a sequel to the film called Oogie's Revenge in 2004. And then, of course, there... And there's been, um, let's see... Disney Publishing did a sequel that was given to the... Uh, well, the film in the form of a young adult novel released as Long Live the Pumpkin Queen. Featuring Sally as the main character told through her point of view with events taking place after the film, which was released last August. But who knows what will become of this if we ever got um, a follow-up and why have you. After it's, well, since it's release, it's received numerous card games and also, well, 
different types of games uh, and books, comics, and even and even manga. Now, of course, characters from this have also appeared in the Kingdom Hearts series and even the Disney Infinity game as well. So anyway, I think that was pretty good and what have you. Now, the score from Danny Elfman and its songs, which were written by him, I thought they were very good and what have you. So, you can't go wrong with Danny Elfman, who was certainly no stranger to working with Mr. Burry. It was it was even nominated for an Academy Award for Best Visual Effects for a first for an anime film, but it unfortunately lost to Jurassic Park. Now, as for our voice acting cast, we have Chris Sarandon voicing Jack Skellington, who I know that guy. He's he of course recently appeared in the original Child's Play and Friday Night. Of course, I've mentioned earlier, Danny Elfman did his singing voice. He did a pretty darn good job. Catherine O'Hara, who had already recently had success with the first two Home Alone films, and, well, she had recently worked with Burning before on Beetlejuice, voiced Sally, which I thought that was a really good character and what have you. All the characters are pretty good. William Hickey voices Dr. Finkelstein, who was pretty good. Um, Glenn Shaggs voices the mayor of Halloween Town. He was pretty good. Yeah, because um, he has a head that turns to happy and, and then sad on the other side. That was so crazy. And Shanks had also recently worked with Burton on Beetlejuice as well. Kim Page voices Oogie Boogie. Yeah. One scary type of character in ways. Ed Ivory voiced Santa Claus. And Paul Pee Wee Herman Rubens voiced Locke. Of course, he had worked with Burton before as well appearing in Pee-wee's Big Adventure, which I will be reviewing that next year. And that's probably going to be the film I'm going to do to mourn the loss of um, him. I know what I was saying about doing it, but I've decided to just wait until next year when this film celebrates its anniversary. And the previous year, he had appeared in Batman Returns. Plus, there's a host of others and what have you. Anyway... The Nightmare Before Christmas, I thought it was pretty good and what have you. I think everyone will really love it. It has become a sleeper hit, so overall, I don't have to ask what I recommend. I should say, yes, go for it. Definitely, you'll really enjoy The Nightmare Before Christmas. And you will have one fun time with it. Definitely. So what did you think of The Nightmare Before Christmas? Let me know in the comment section below. If you liked the video, click the like button. Subscribe and be a part of the Big D Nation. Join me next time when I bring to you a review of John Carpenter's Vampires, which is also celebrating an anniversary. So if you like this, consider checking out my reviews for these other spooktacular flicks from Disney. In the upper left-hand corner is my review of another Disney film that just more recently celebrated its 30th anniversary this year, and that's Hocus Pocus. Or go to the upper right-hand corner and see my review of its Disney Plus sequel, Hocus Pocus 2 from last year, or if you would like, go to the bottom left-hand corner and see my re-review of Beetlejuice, which I did earlier this year. And the bottom right-hand corner is the button you can click to subscribe. If you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, music, video games, etc., then I'm your guy. Thank you for watching. Until next time, on the Big D saying, see ya.